Hi guys, Mel the Train Tutor here again, and this time we're talking about hills, but this isn't a tutorial. Uh, what occurred to me was, as I was building a load of hills, is we should really just have a chat about hill planning. Okay, there's a phrase that served me well. Okay, and I learned it when I was back in the army, and it's prior planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. Okay, and basically what it means is, before you start something, prep it, plan it. Or planet prep it. <laughs> but you get the idea. Basically, just don't go charging into things, yeah? Otherwise, you're going to make mistakes, especially if it's a big project. Now, if you're making a one-off hill, you can generally sort of wing that. But if you're making a table's worth of terrain, okay, then that needs some planning. So what I thought I'd do is I've jotted down just a couple of points in no specific order. And I thought I'd just quickly talk through a few of the different points and then, you know, well, you can use that as a springboard of what to think about when you're planning, you know, a, a terrain build. And I'm, this one's specifically on hills. You know, I don't want to talk about other things just yet. You know, let's keep it down to hills so I can keep it within this playlist. So anyway, planning hills. There's a few things you need to think about. Now, the first thing, yeah, and I know this sounds crazy, but what's it going to be used for? Now, you're going to be saying, Mel, you're daft. Yeah, it's a hill for a war games. Yeah, I get that. Okay. But what's the game system? What scale is it? Is it skirmish? Is it ranked? Yeah, all these questions have an effect on the terrain you build. And if you don't think about them in advance, what you can often find is you, you, you build your terrain to finally put your models on it on the table and it doesn't work. And then all of a sudden you've got a glorious, wonderful looking piece of impassable terrain. Yeah, and although impassable terrain is good, it looks nice, it doesn't add to the dynamics of the game that much. You know, in my opinion, anyway. So let's talk about function. OK, what's the, the hill there to do? Is it there to look pretty? Is it there for models to stand on? Is it there for models to hide behind? Is it there for models to take cover on? OK, now take this. You've seen this in a prior tutorial. This is designed for models to stand on. OK, you can't take cover from it because you can't stand behind it. OK. But I've built this in such a way that models can stand on here. Yeah, pretty obvious. It's flat. Yeah, we all get that. But if I didn't know what gaming system this was for, I could have quite easily made this more rougher. OK, and then it'd be no use for a skirmish game. So that's what, that's the sort of stuff I'm talking about. Know the function of your terrain. Know what sort of models are going to be going on it. What scale are they? I mean, this is great for a 28 mil. Yeah, but it'd be naff for 54 mil. Yeah, it'd be it wouldn't look right in 15 mil and 6 mil would just be a joke. I mean, you'd have these, yeah, towering above the people at, at 6 mil and even 15 mil. OK, so know what, what you call it, know what scale, what game system, what function your terrain is going to serve. And it's well worth just, you know. Get a little bit of paper and, and jot it down so you can get those thoughts formed in your head. Now, if you play a lot of systems, yeah, and your terrain is used for various different things, go for the lowest common denominator, which means if you play 28 mil and 6 mil, yeah, make damn sure if you only want to build one set of terrain, it works for 28 mil. Because if it does work for 28 mil, you will be able to play 6 mil on it. Yeah, what you won't be able to do is place 54 mil. So if you play 54 mil, you need to go 28 mil to 50. You, you get the idea. Yeah. So basically, in advance, look at what you're building. Look at what function it serves. OK. Next sort of thing you need to sort of decide is well, what sort of terrain is it? Is it going to be flat? Is it going to be gradiated? Am I going to have cliffs? Am I going to have caves? How am I going to do those things? You know, do you want a mix? If so, write down what sort of mix you want. What biome, that's a word from Minecraft, what biome does it belong to? You know, is it deciduous, northern European? Is it desert? Is it Arctic? Is it jungle? Is it alien? Is it atomic wasteland? You know, know the sort of architect, the, the environment it, it's going to belong in. Because when you're planning, you're going to need to get the bits for this and the colours. Yeah, and so you can do a bit of research in advance rather than building your train and go, right, now what colours do I need? And having to wait until you can source the right colours. OK. Uh, other things. Are you going to make any of the pieces modular? 
If so, which pieces are going to be modular? How much terrain do you need? Yeah, now you think about it. They, they sort of recommend that a quarter of a table's terrain, a full of terrain, is enough to give a, a good spread around a table. So if you're talking about a six foot by four foot table, then you're looking at two foot by three foot or six square foot of terrain to spread it across the table. Okay, more than that gives quite a compact area, less than that gives a, a more sparse area, which is good for rank and file sort of games. Rank and file games work well with lots of space because you've got lots of bases and they need to move around. Skirmish games can interact with the terrain far better than rank and file games. Uh, so we've covered scale, we've covered storage. Yeah, how are you going to store them? For example, if you build them so big and you know, and you end up with a load of terrain and you haven't considered storage, you then like got an angry wife who's wondering why a house is littered with hills. Okay, so work on your storage, you know, make sure that what you're building you can actually store. You know, the other sort of things is, you know, what sort of time scale is the project going to be? It's unrealistic with terrain to think I will start a project and I will finish a project. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, with all the PVA, the ceiling, you know, the paints, the drying times. Hey, boss. You know, it's just unrealistic to say, I'm going to start it, I'm going to finish it. So it's going to spread over a couple of evenings. Or, you know, you need drying time in between that. <coughs> Pardon me. So you, it's best to actually plan it out. I'll do this bit then, I'll do this bit then. Rather than sort of having half-finished projects projects you know being able to tell the wife yeah the kitchen table is going to be full of hills for tonight i'll put them away tomorrow when they're dry and i'll get them back out on friday yeah wives like that sort of information you know they don't like the idea of kitchen tables being cluttered and mothers don't like it either yeah but if you give them a sort of time scale they're far happier i mean the other thing is you know materials you know list down the materials you've got what you need yeah and get them in advance there's nothing worse than having hills that are like 90% there and you can't finish them because you've got to nip into town to pick up one thing, okay, that you could have picked up weeks ago. Yeah, so this is just general planning. So that's just sort of my general things to, to think about. What are you going to use it for? What scale? What function is it going to be used for? What features are you going to have on it? How are you going to store it? What materials do you need? How many of them do you need? Okay, these are the questions you need to answer before planning a big project. Okay, I'm not saying that you can't do a big project without answering these questions, but it will go far better if you ask these questions in advance and you will be far happier with the results. Yeah, if you do. And on that, I've got a shed load of hills that are sitting on my dining table since last year and I've really got to get stuck into them. So I'm going to pull my finger out, so to so to speak, and get stuck into those because the wife is champing at the bit. <laughs> anyway, guys, listen, if you've got any questions or anything you'd like to add to this, and I welcome additions and extra information. I'm always learning, you know, I don't know everything. You know, a master is someone who refers to a master, as my old martial arts teacher used to say. Yeah, there's no one who knows everything. Everything, everyone's got something to learn and everyone's got something to teach. So if you think you can share some information that I haven't come across, throw it in the comments. Yeah, I really do appreciate it. As always, like, subscribe, tell your mates, send me cash. I accept cash and strippers or use terrain. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I've got a crack on. You have a good day. All the best. Yeah. Ta-ra.